Before participating in the following activity, there are some important things we want you to do. Please remember to practice physical distancing of at least six feet from anyone that is outside of your home. Wear comfortable and proper shoes. Make sure you have an open space around you with no objects or obstacles in the way. Use the proper equipment or alternative objects you can find in your home. And last, stay hydrated and have fun. Hi everyone, Kirsten here. Today we're going to do the sweeping challenge for curling. So if you've ever curled before, you know that sweeping is a big part of the game. It can help the rock go further, curl less. It's really the chance for your whole team to help make the shot complete. And uh, again, if you've known that, if you've curled before and swept before, you know it's pretty tiring. So before doing this challenge, you might wanna try it a couple of times. I haven't, and it's the off season for curling right now, so I don't think I'm gonna be very good, but I am actually excited to try this challenge a few times throughout the year and see if I get any better. Now, typically when you sweep, it's about applying pressure on the broom to the ice and going quick at the same time. We can't gauge how much pressure you're going uh, to put on the broom from home, but we can practice how quickly you're moving the broom back and forth. Um, now you can do this challenge at home before you get back to curling this year or on the ice if you're already out there. So it's totally up to you. If you're on the ice, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a, a spot around you, availability to go onto the ice surface safely. So make sure you're wearing your gripper or your curling shoes and no one else is around you or throwing rocks around you and you'll need your curling broom. If you're doing this from home like I am today, you can use a variety of different things. So um, I've got my curling broom out of storage uh, for, for this year and uh, so I'm going to try to use that. I've also grabbed another broom so that you can see that I can use this broom as well that's got a protective cap on it. And regardless of what broom type you wanna use, uh, you just wanna make sure that you put something between the broom and the floor of your house so that it can protect it from scratching the surface. So I can use a sock for the top of my broom. I'm going to use my usual curling broom today. And I'm going to use a tea towel to protect the floor surface from my broom and also to protect the top of my broom for when I get back to curling. The best spot to do an activity like this is on hardwood or tile. Carpet's a little bit sticky. Um, so you're gonna need a wide open space around you so you don't hit anyone with your broom as you're going through. You'll need a broom, a protective surface, something to keep time. I've got my trusty curling stopwatch here with me today uh, and someone to film for you. So for this exercise, you have 20 seconds to complete it. And 20 seconds is about the time that it takes a rock to get down the ice. I'm always exhausted when I sweep, so I can't wait to see how this goes. And you're going to count how many times in 20 seconds that you can pull the broom back and forth. So I'll sweep in a moment, but every push that you take is a count of one and a pull that you take counts as one as well. So if I were to count four, it would count one, two, three, four. You have 20 seconds. Let's see how many times you can pull the broom back and forth. Are we ready? I'm gonna try it myself. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I've got my timer, my wide open space, my towel, my broom, my slippery floor, and I'm ready to go. On your mark, get set, go. All right, time's up. I'm exhausted. I need some water before I try this again, but I got 32 counts. How many can you do? Let us know.